Vaginal bleeding during pregnancy can cause serious problems. Placental abruption and previ are two possible conditions that can cause them. Central to these conditions is the placenta. This incredible organ delivers oxygen and nutrients to the baby while removing waste all at the same time. The placenta naturally detaches from the uterine wall after birth, but when it detaches too early or implants in the wrong location, complications arise. Let's start with placental abruption. This occurs when part or all of the placenta separates from the uterine wall before the delivery. It's a serious condition affecting about 1% of pregnancies and can lead to significant bleeding and fetal distress. Bleeding in the placental abruption can be concealed, which is trapped behind the placenta, or revealed, visible as vaginal bleeding. That's why it is imperative to remember that the amount of bleeding doesn't always reflect the severity. It can be classified into three stages based on severity. We can have a mild abruption, which is a small separation with minimal bleeding. The patient may have had mild abdominal pain, but fetal distress is typically rare. You could have moderate abruption, partial separation with moderate bleeding. The patient experiences significant abdominal pain, uterine tenderness, and possible fetal distress. And then we have the severe abruption, complete separation with heavy bleeding. The uterus may feel woody hard and fetal distress or death is likely. Maternal complications like DIC, which is disseminated intravascular coagulation and renal failure also occur in severe abruption. Patients with placental abruption often present with painful vaginal bleeding, abdominal pain, and a tender, hard uterus. In severe cases, the uterus may feel board-like, and fetal distress may occur due to reduced oxygen and nutrient supply. Risk factors include hypertension, smoking, trauma, and a history of abruption. Complications can be life-threatening, including fetal death, DIC, renal failure, and rarely maternal death. Now, let's discuss placental previa. In earlier stages of pregnancy, the placenta is more likely to be low-lying. However, this happens to move upwards as the pregnancy progresses. Placental previa occurs when the placenta implants low in the uterus at term, sometimes covering the cervix. It's like the placenta is blocking the baby's exit route. It can be classified into three stages based on placental location. A complete placenta previa, where the placenta completely covers the cervical opening, or the partial placenta previa, where it just covers at halfway, or we have the low-lying placenta. This placenta is near, but not covering the cervix. It's less than two centimeters away. Patients with placenta previa after experience painful, bright red bleeding after 20 weeks. Unlike abruption, there's no pain, but the bleeding can be heavy. The risk factors include previous C-sections, having multiple pregnancies, advanced maternal age, Complications can include severe bleeding and placental accreta spectrum, where the placenta invades deeply into the uterine wall. This can make delivery more challenging and increases the risk of a large hemorrhage. The two differentiations between these conditions to remember is placental abruption involves painful bleeding and a tender uterus, while placenta previa causes painless bright red bleeding. Abruption is an emergency, often requiring quick action, while previa is managed with careful monitoring and planned delivery. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more medical information and to really help you on your next exam.